So we are camping with some friends of ours the last couple weeks and when we first all got together we were very excited. We pulled into the campground and we're like okay let's all go off and go do something. So we unhooked our car and our truck and ran off to go do something and we left our rock tamers on and they followed us. So the next day we were going somewhere a little further and we just decided you know you can remove those rock tamers you can leave them on or you can remove them that's the beauty of it but we decided to remove them and they followed us it was about an hour and we were on highway speeds and they weren't even following us that close there were several link car links behind us and our dually threw up a rock and chipped their windshield let me show you pretty good little chip and apparently it's just right where it has that secondary chip that they cannot repair that. So our friends have now asked us as a new policy, whenever we go anywhere together, if we can keep our rock tamers on to protect their windshield. Hi, we are Cheryl and John. We sold our home and business in March 2020 and set out to live life differently, traveling the country in an RV with our twin daughters, Brighton and Daisy. We believe the best days are always ahead of us even in good times. Thank you for joining us as we inspire others to seek the bright days ahead. Hello, BDA family. We're really excited. We just got this shipment in from Rock Tamers. It's a, uh, a serious mud flap to go on the back of our Ford F450. Uh, we just got this a few months ago and with our previous truck, the F350, we had some regular mud flaps on the back of this dually. And it just wasn't enough to keep rocks and tar and things from flying up onto the front of our Solitude 3740BH. So I find myself forever cleaning the front of this, getting tar off of it. There's a couple rock chips in it now, which is disappointing. But now we're um, hoping that these rock tamers that we put on is going to eliminate most of that. One, so I won't have to clean it so much, and two, to protect our investment. All right, now we have, oh, the main box. Oh. So here's, uh, well, that's in French. I took French in ninth grade, but I don't know what that says. Protégez ce que vous remorquez. Let's turn it over and see if we can get the English version. There we go. Protect what you tow. So you see that they're adjustable from 67 and three quarter inches to 97 and a quarter. So they're plenty wide enough for the width of my dually. And we'll proceed to take these out and start getting them fitted up. All right, well, we got the box. So we'll see if, how easy it is to open. Looks like we just cut a couple here, cut a little here, cut a little here, cut a little there. Take her off. Instruction manual. I recommend you read this. Full disclosure, I don't always do it. But Cheryl does. And then she tells me what I did wrong, and then we fix it. That's so why we do time, everything twice. So this time we're going to do it right the first time by reading the manual. But we're just going to take a look at what's in the box. First of all, the instruction manual. This looks like a big mud flap. One of two. That is big. Looks like we're going to have to put the Rock Tamer logo on here. Not there, always. Then some more hardware. More hardware. Put this to the side. Some more hanging hardware. This is the one that goes on to our two and a half inch hitch, is what we're using to hold it on. Hitch goes into there, holds it in place. And then the arms are going to come out of here and hang your big rock tamer mud flaps. And they have other sizes for that, right? Correct. You can get a three inch or a two inch. But we chose the inch and a half. Two and a half. Here, two and a half inch. This is the all important rock tamer logo that goes on our mud flap. And lots of hardware. Let's hope we don't have anything left over at the end. And there should be one more mud flap because one's not enough. Hidden below, there it is. So it looks like I have everything. And now we'll go read the instruction manual. And when we come back, we'll start the installation process. Are you ready? Here's Cheryl. <laughs> well, this is very reality television. No makeup, no hair. 
<laughs> he said, I promise you won't be on camera, but oh well. But I don't read instruction manuals very well. <laughs> that is true. So Cheryl's reading through the instruction manual to figure out what the next steps are to installing our rock tamers. Okay. Okay, proof. We have been reading the instructions. I'm sorry to put this together, but as John likes to remind us, this is not a how-to video. This goes on the um, here, and then you want the bolt to face away from the vehicle. The so nut, the nut or the bolt? The nut, excuse me, nut. So kind of getting started. Um, one of the tips in here is this says that you'll need 8 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 13 millimeter, 17 millimeter, or an adjustable wrench. So just if you're in the rig and you don't carry millimeter with you, that's something you need to be aware of. Yeah, everything's metric. So not a lot of people have metric tools. So luckily, I'm loose docking. Cheryl's dad does have metric tools. Because this is one thing I wouldn't have had as an RV or maybe something I should get metric tools. But luckily, Bill has them. All right. Did that work better? That helped. Yeah. So our experience on the other side was when you loosen this arm this is supposed to slide in and we couldn't really get it in very well so we used our handy dandy rubber mallet which worked but john use some silicone this time i sprayed some silicone on it work harder not Slid smarter right in without a hammer no work smarter not harder work smarter not harder. we sometimes work harder not smarter oftentimes but so that silicone spray it just made it slide right in right correct that's awesome the other thing that's happening here is the instructions said to build it right on the hitch but i didn't want to be in these rocks on my knees, wrenching my back and everything else, trying to put it on on the on the hitch itself. So I'm using my handy dandy tailgate here, so everything is kind of waist height. And much easier on my back and much easier on the installation. Well, and we have a lot of hands. If this is too heavy, I mean, they probably said that because it might be heavy. So well, we have I several hands to put it on with. Hopefully, too. it's not too heavy because if it's only me. Putting this on and off as we use it. Oh, that's I, a good point. I don't want it to be that heavy. We'll have to get back to you on that. You use your handy dandy silicone slide again? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, we so we'll need those over here. This one's got stuck on there. Yeah, I got that one stuck on there. A little bit of silicone in there. Squares away? Squares towards the vehicle, which that's the side, yes. No, it squares away from the vehicle, you said. Yeah, away from the vehicle, so side up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Again, not a how-to. We've run into an issue. So, we were trying to do this. Now I know why they say assemble it on the hitch. Because you have to measure your mud flap. And they want the vehicle or like the trailer on with the full tongue weight on the back of the vehicle so you can see how your vehicle comes down so you can measure and see how it's scrubbing because then you're gonna have to cut off some of the top and punch your own holes in it so this may be another project for another moment okay take two you've moved into the garage and you're reading did, instructions we did have to put it on there first <laughs> I guess this is a classic case. Read the instruction manual, as we always say. As we always say, read the instruction manual. So I had to go down to Lowe's and get a hitch plug, because you do have to have one of these in order for it to work. So ours is a two and a half inch shank. So I found a two and a half inch at the Lowe's. FYI, Harbor Freight doesn't have two and a half inch shanks. So now we've got it to this stage. Mud flaps are going to be staged about this far out because I do have a dually. It's about exactly where it should be on the width. There's yeah, there's about three positions on this, right? Three positions for dually, light truck, light vehicle. Don't know why you'd have one of these on an SUV, but I guess you could. So, next issue we ran into, which is why we have it actually mounted on the hitch, is Rock Tamer provides these maximum length. And this is too long because when we put a weight on it, it's going to be dragging the ground when I put my fifth wheel on the back. 
So now we're going to measure this to allow for like three or four inches of ground clearance. Then we'll have to make a cut and put new bolt holes in there. Yeah, so they kind of line the back and then they show you where the new bolt holes and they provide a punch. And a punch for these. The real fun part is going to be cutting this with whatever I have to cut it with. So it's a utility knife and it does say in the instructions it's going to take several passes. Yes. We'll, we'll pick that up here in a minute. So now we've measured and we're cutting. So what we're looking for is, because the truck, it does say this in the owner's manual, is that you should put the weight of whatever you're towing on the trailer. But ours is in a precarious spot and we're not gonna be able to move it until we leave, which is not till tomorrow. So we're cutting this a little with some forgiveness. We're cutting it maybe a little long because I'm not sure how far the truck comes down. I think the truck, when you put weight on it, seats at about two more inches. And then you want this to hang three to four inches off the ground. We took this off. Yes. And then we'll use these holes here, punch through for our screws. So just to hold it under here. Now, we'll make sure we cut the other one the same. That wasn't that hard to cut though. Mm -mm. Everything in the cardboard here. Okay. Now, what are you doing? Well, I'm looking at this punch. It says use the pre molded holes, right? Yes. So I'll put it right over the top of it. It's bouncing on me. Hmm. hmm. <laughs> It's bouncing. This doesn't work. You know, Dad has a new drill press he'd love to use. So, does that bit, does it look like it's going to work? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Do you know how to use this thing? I uh, used one in shop class. And that was what, 10, 15 years ago? Five? Yeah. Ninth grade. Hey, no objections. I've been trying to sew on patches from my eighth grade helmet class. I don't know. This end one might be a little difficult. <laughs> so, what are you doing here, John? Punching out these holes. Per the instructions? Per the instructions. I tried to use a drill press. That didn't work. <clears throat> now I'm using the punch that's provided and on a piece of wood. Guess what? That works. The cardboard did it. I should read those instructions. <laughs> so for lessons for those back at home, read the instructions. You can try it the other ways like we've done and yeah we just wanted to perform a public service by providing with ways not to do it right to show you that the folks at rock tamers actually did think this through got the flaps on there now I'm just getting them out to the right width this little retaining screw comes through here and you can see that it's kind of lined up with my outer wheel of the dually and then we'll do the same thing over here get lined up with that screw hole through the magic of television it's already there so let's push this through here Screw that through there. Put the nylon lock nut on it. And land on it's got to go backwards. Okay, now we have them in place. And now I think that all we have left to do is to 
tighten all the bolts up and put the Rock Tamer um, Rock Tamer logos on the flaps themselves. All right, we've got one of the Rock Tamer trim pieces on the right mud flap. I have to tell you, it was uh, eight screws, nuts, and it took me just as long to do that as it did just about <laughs> everything else so far besides punching the holes in the mud flaps. So it's not really anything about integrity or our purpose, but it does um, have a nice brand that the people can see behind you. Um, also probably a good licensing opportunity. I could see this saying Ford or Ram or Grand Design or some other things. So maybe the people at Rock Tamers will contact some other companies about maybe using a licensed brand on here that reflects either the truck or the rig. So anyway, I want to proceed to put these on this. I'll show you one. So it just fits right in the molded part of my butt. Nice to have a chair. Then you take one screw, one spacer, one washer, and one nut, like so. You put the spacer, I'll start here in the middle. You put the spacer up through the hole in the back, like this. Put it there, this here. Put the screw down through there. Put a flat washer on the back, followed by a nylon nut, which, as you know, you always put it on kind of backwards. You're a nut. You're a nut. So we screw that on, get it started. Easier said than done. You want small hands again? This is where get your assistant to do the rest of it when you're not on film. Because <clears throat> she has small hands and has more patience. So, you got the one in, seven more to go. And here we are. The last screw of the Rock Tamer trim piece. Locked and loaded, not too tight. As the instructions say. Does that mean we're starting to read the instructions? We're starting to read the instructions. It works out a lot better for us. So now there's the Rock Tamer brand, loud and proud, there on the back of the mud flap. So what are you measuring? Right now I'm trying to make sure that each side is the same. The same each side sticking out the same. So I came over here and I'm looking to make sure that this mud flap is not out further than my wheel well because I don't want to accidentally hit something thinking I'm clear. So it's about even with the wheel well and the mirror. Like they always say, if your mirror's clear, you're good. So I think this is in a perfect spot on this side, which is about uh, two and three eighths inches. Okay, now both my mud flap arms are exactly the same width. This is two and three eighths here, two and three eighths here. That's where I want it out there, not extending beyond my wheel well because I don't want to hit stuff uh, if I am driving without the rig in the back. So we're tightening these down. We start with the middle and we just kind of work our way to each side. So evenly. And there will be a little gap that showed. There is a gap. So we have this all tightened up. And the next step. Supposedly, supposedly I have to get this to 80 foot pounds with my torque wrist. Trying to measure 80 foot pounds with my torque wrist. That looks like 77 right there. 77, 80, 80, 80. Are you borrowing tools again? Yeah, I'm borrowing tools. This is a good thing about moving docking. Yeah, that one, that's much better. One and one sixteen. Well, it's supposed to be 27 millimeter, or it said one and one eighth, but this you found. Okay, and then these big bolts here need to be torqued with your torque wrench to 125 foot pounds of torque. Oh, there you go again, barring tools. 125 right there. Click. 
Okay, babe, we're in the home stretch. Put the end cap in here. Yep. Screw that in instead of pounding it like my wife did. I'm the best assistant you have. <laughs> All right, and now what else do we have? Well, those little covers that go on the back of the bolts. Those covers? Mm-hmm. Go back here? Yep. I'm actually thinking about it. I don't know of any RVers that we watch that has the husband and wife team work on projects together. Probably not. We're a first. It's the first <laughs> husband and wife team that's ever worked well together. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. Someone may have been giving his joy rock this morning. I have a joy rock. Oh, your joy. Keys. Here it is. Joy. Joy rock. Yes. Whenever I get frustrated or lose my patience, I seek joy through the stone and I rub it with my thumb. And we and don't steal. We don't steal what? Other people's joy. We don't steal other people's joy. No. No. Stealing You're... is never good, even when you try to steal somebody's joy. <laughs> right. Or as somebody once told me, you're a fun sucker. I don't know who would have said that. This is not all the time. No. All right. It is quite literally, though, a lot of our projects. We work well together, though. Thank you. Okay, did you put the little... I never tightened this one up. You forgot to remind me. Oh. We're not quite done, though, babe. What else is left? The lights. Oh, we have to do the light. I forgot about the light. Rock Tamer also sent us a light, and hopefully it's easy to install. It's brand new. Because I'm starting to lose my joy. <laughs> no, no, rub your rock. Rub the rock, rub the rock. It's brand new um, light. Babe, I know it's easy to install. Oh, it says to. It says it's easy to easy install. Easy to install. All right. Okay. All right, we have the right I just, lights. Yeah, and I just read the instructions. Easy to install. Yeah, I just read the instructions. What's it say? You have to loosen those bolts on the mud flaps oh. to slide these in. <laughs> I just tightened them. <laughs> I know, but you have to loosen them, see, so the bolts can like slide in and then you slide that light on. It is very easy to install if you hadn't have tightened everything up. Hmm. All right. Do you need your joy rock? Need my joy rock. <laughs> okay. So you now have loosened these up where there's a little bit of a gap. And then it says there's no left or right, but from the inside, so the inside here, you slide those on. Slide them on. go make sure they're really loose okay on yep so then we will then tighten those up again and you do that on both sides and then you pull out all those cords and it had a lot about male to female plug that I got to read again all right so as far as power plug this into here and then we're going to take this one plug it in this LED joint uh, connection and then uh oh here we go the other way we go this down here the longer one and the shorter one down here okay I think I got that all right got one on screwed on there pretty simply it's like I tightened up a little bit more and then the longer telephone cord wire will go over here on the other side all right, the moment of the truth. Oh yeah. We've got lights on the rock tamers. Those look beautiful. And we also have turn signals on them, which I didn't know, so that's great. Very cool. Turn signals, brake lights on our rock tamers. If I'm not pulling the rig, or even if you are, you're still gonna be able to see on the side there, which makes it a little bit safer. So, uh, nice, nice idea, Rock Tamers. These look great. Just gonna put some zip ties on here, make sure the wires are secure and not in the way and won't slip. And uh, I think we'll be all set. All right, there's the finished product. I've got the emergency flashers on just for effect. With the Rock Tamer, as you can see, sticking out there far enough to block any stuff getting on my rig same exact distance on this side 
It looks real nice. Thank you, Rock Tamer. We're going to give these a really good evaluation. And hopefully, I don't have to clean the front of that as much as I have in the past. And no rock stones or rock chips on it either. So, thank you very much. And we hope you all have bright days ahead.